What's up guys? So today, let's take a look at a cheap, effective, and a neat way of keeping your snakes enclosures nice and tidy. All right, so as you guys know, I'm a big fan of substrate in all my enclosures, though this month has been a bit of a tricky one. I had a few things that I had to kill financially. Um, they're sorted out now, so that's fantastic. But because of that, I couldn't afford new substrate. Now, I could have probably pushed the substrate another month, but um, yeah, a lot of the enclosures, the substrate is quite, well, how can I say this? It's, it's due, it's due for a change. So we're gonna be, I'm gonna be showing you guys a variety to substrate that you can give your animals um, that's way better than newspaper. Guys, don't use newspaper. There's a lot of ink and stuff in there, and yeah, in general, it's just not a good practice, and, and it looks kind of shanty. So we're gonna be using butcher's paper. Let me show you that. We're gonna be showing you guys butcher paper. Now these are big and heavy. Relatively affordable, they're like 250 bucks for your entire roll. I think there's about mm, 200 sheets plus minus in a roll. So that's that's quite a lot of case notes that you guys can do. And then the second one is the all-time favorite paper towel. So we're actually gonna start off with the black rack over here. This one, the famous one over there that you guys already love and love. We're gonna be taking out all the substrate and I'm gonna be showing you guys two new individuals that we got today as well. So definitely stay in this video for that. You guys are definitely gonna to wanna to see these new additions. So yeah, we're gonna be cleaning all of the substrate out and then putting paper towel in these because these are a bit too small for that big, big, big butcher table. So let's jump right into that. A little longer than a few minutes later. We're basically done with this black crack. Let me go show you guys quickly what I did here. So for now, all the snakes are in just plain paper towel. Shame, look at how tiny that little squam legs. The bandit's upset with me. Uh, the new, ooh, I'm gonna show you guys the new edition. But yeah, so I took out all the decoration pieces. They're gonna get washed now in the dishwasher. This is just to clean everything up nice and easily. And uh, since I have the luxury of a dishwasher, I'm using that. So I'm actually gonna show you guys what I do and what my process is with this little tub over here. All right, so first off, let's get the snake out. <laughs> right over here. How pretty is this little snow corn snake? I mean, I've seen nice corn snakes, nice snows, but look at this thing. It's beautiful. Crazy pretty. It even has some lime green to it at the bottom, but yeah. So I take the snake out, put him in his own little separate shandies while I clean up. Um, doop. Always secure everything. All right, and then I have a look at everything. All right, so this needs to be clean. So get all, most of the debris off. Put it aside. Um, the woods I'm not going to be reusing again. They're basically old and tired now, so they're going away. Uh, this moss looks usable still, so I'm going to take the moss out and put it there with the rest of the moss that's usable. That's some extra I still have left from the time before. All the water dishes mandatorily are going to get washed. And then all of this you see here, all the substrate, I just literally go and dump it out. And now, I'm just gonna quickly F10 it and then get right back to you guys. So, now that it's cleaned, I just reintroduce the animal back into its little tubby. Don't go out. And then, all right, so it's very bare now, but keep in mind, guys, all of that's gonna get washed in the dishwasher, and then I'll reset up the tubs, and I'll show you guys exactly what everything looks like, but I still have to do all of that, still have to do all of this, all of that, all of that, all of that, all of this, and then, all of those, which are all new animals that I'll be showing you guys in this video. So it's a kind of fun video. This snake room is already looking a lot better. I mean, look how nice these enclosures look with the butcher paper in, right? That's why, uh, let me just do that. So you guys can actually see my face, do that. Scroll there, where's that thingy? Ha, I'm too fast. Scroll, scroll, hey. Whoops, function. Huh, why can't I find this? Hmm, should be able to find this very easily. There's the function. Mm. All right, I'll be back with you guys in a second. Whew, all right guys, I am super sweaty, man. I, I've been busy in here, trust me, man. Like, I mean, everything about me is dirty, but look how nice these enclosures look. Look at that, man, I mean, that's so sick. So this over here, as you guys know, is the Dumeril's Females Enclosure. Let me open up for you guys. She's selling right there. Nice and snug. And then um, 
the monocles girl. She's very actively busy moving around all over here. I left the <laughs> I left the heart in there. I yeah, there's a story with that heart, and I like it there. And okay, so yeah, I did this entire rack over here, and I'm 99.9% .9 done with that rack over there. Just this last little retic left to do, and then I'll be done with that rack. But the other male is currently soaking, so when he's done soaking, he's going back, and then she's coming out, and she's going to take his place right there, busy with the soak. But yes, so okay. In the meantime, while we wait for them, uh, let me show you guys two, two of the ten new additions. These guys are definitely going to be blowing your minds. All right, and those two individuals actually are blood python. That's right, the new editions are Blood Pythons. We finally have them. For my Python friends out there, you guys have been watching me for my Pythons. <laughs> it's kind of funny to think that people would, since I've only shown you guys the ball pythons. Not that I just keep ball pythons, it's just I've only shown you guys the ball pythons. But now, let me show you guys the Blood Pythons. I actually keep a wider sort of pythons. I think I should maybe do an like a collection to a video, you know, show you guys what what's actually going down. But yeah, let's feed the new additions. All right, and there is the male blood python. They are still hatchlings, so they're still pretty young, but, eh, well, they're not hatchlings, they were just slow grown. And let's see if they'll eat for us yet. Oh yeah, that's so nice, that's so nice, that's so nice. I'm so freaking happy about these guys. Mm, mm, mm. And here is the female. Now she definitely lives up to the uh, true blood python name. She's a bit of a cantankerous one. Oh, she's actually gonna fight. <laughs> How nice is that? Oh, guys, I'm so happy about having these guys. I am so, 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 so happy. Oh, it's just crazy cool animals. Jeez. I'm gonna look at that coloration. Mm, mm, mm. Why am I so excited about having the blood pythons? First of all, guys, these guys have a ridiculous, and I'm talking about a ridiculously powerful strike. And I actually wanna observe that, right? So the the guy I got them from, the guy that bred them out, which is V Reptiles, um, I'll link his Instagram in the description for you guys, so you guys can go check him out. So V Reptiles bred them out, and he actually has stated that the mother of these has so, has physically struck, so, so has physically, wow, I'm struggling with English today, has physically struck so hard at a little, at a, well, not a little rabbit, at a rabbit that he gave her, that he could physically hear on impact how that rabbit's ribs broke now okay full disclosure listen before everyone goes off and panics he only feeds pre-killed guys well not pre-killed frozen thought so nothing nothing uh, not up to standard we follow and adhere to the rules and the protocols but yes so he says he could physically hear when that blood python went like bah! you could physically hear the rabbit's ribs crushing with just the impact of the bite now that alone to me is very very impressive the second reason why I am so excited for having a blood python is because I want to disprove their bad name. So they have a reputation all around that they are quite an aggressive python species. This is true for a majority of them, but the reason for that is lack of time. You can tame and habituate any animal out there guaranteed. So how do I know this for a fact? Because I've seen the mother. Guys, these animals' mother is the sweetheart of sweetheart. She's easier to work with than my bull python male centurion, which has converted countless people to be snake lovers. So yeah, now that we've had a look at them, I want to actually show you guys the other eight new individuals, which is a pretty exciting thing. I was gonna wait a bit till I bring you guys in the loop on them, but since this video is just kind of a, a bland topic, I'm gonna bring you guys in on the loop on them right this minute. And here they are, these are all very tiny little white lip vipers. Now, they will soon be available to you all. Where are you hiding? Where are you hiding? <laughs> These guys are master camouflagers in this moss. Ah, yeah, there you are. Right there in the very middle. There's another one over there. 
another one sitting right over there. And there in the corner another one, and there another one. They've already had their very first meals, so they're definitely starting to do better. One of the benefits of actually using the butcher's paper, as I've done today, so first of all, it's way cheaper than repurchasing substrate every second month. Um, it is not as aesthetically pleasing as substrate, obviously. Substrate is so close to the natural thing. But I would say this is definitely the second best option. So butcher's paper, first of all, is a lot cheaper than substrate. Secondly, it's very easy to clean. Because now simply the snake poops, you remove the snake out of the enclosure, remove the butcher's paper, and then you basically have a re-sterile environment. Uh, whereas the substrate, you'd have to remove all the substrate eventually and clean up the whole thing to make it sterile. You can't simply just spot clean. This, you also can't spot clean, so it forces you to every single time clean basically 100%. So yeah, guys, that is in a nutshell why butcher's paper is definitely not a bad option. So as a little bonus, we're going to be feeding the monocled cobra. I know you guys love to watch her eat. I've been having a lot of messages, and then I'm going to be feeding some of the other snakes, but none of that's going to be on camera because, you know, you guys just come back for more videos. So, let's give her a meal. Hey, hey. recognize this. <laughs> recognize your food. Recognize your food. Yes, I know. I know. There you go. Yeah, that's for you. Alright, enjoy. Enjoy that. Ooh, that's a pretty picture. Then can you steal that camera from you? Good. Let's see if we can get some nice close ups. Doggy, they'd be pretty. Kind of looks like she's in a photo booth. Hmm. I do dig this butcher paper look. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys uh, see the benefits of using butcher paper and also see the benefits of using substrate. It's a whole thing. It's down to personal preference at the end of the day. For now, I'm gonna be using the butcher's paper, but I am kind of fifty fifty now after using it. Like, I don't know if I want to go back to substrate. Look at her, she's already starting to eat. So nice. So, I don't know if I'm actually going to go back to substrate. We'll have to see. We'll give it a... We'll give this a few months. We'll see how I feel after a few months. I most likely will go back to substrate. But if I don't, I kind of think this butcher paper looks nice. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. From Hot Exotics, you guys know I love you. You guys know I appreciate you. See you next time.